Hey, welcome. hey, welcome to the channel. It's uh, it's Sunday. It's about 12 o'clock, and I'm back up in the city again, trying to just try to shoot another video between the rain showers, and uh, we'll see what kind of luck I had. It, it was pouring yesterday after I finished. I came up yesterday and did this video, and uh, I met John Canton for lunch, and got back home, and I was edit I edited the video, had it all ready to put up, and and. Uh, watched it a couple times and I, I didn't like the way I was portraying the uh, the story I, I, I kind of got tunnel vision and I was being a little bit biased so rather than do that I figured I'd come up here and do the walk again and I'll, I'll tell the story and uh, give you a better idea and, and be a little bit more objective in telling it than I did the last time sometimes we get tunnel vision and we, we think think certain things and they're not really they may or may not be the way that we think they are, but uh, I thought it was best just to tell it again. And uh, we're out here at DK Bookstore, and we're gonna walk around the front and then take one of the side alleys and uh, go over by uh, Loy Crow Road a little bit and take take the back roads. It's, uh, it's not a bad day today. You can see the clouds out there. It looks like it's gonna rain, but you know, who knows? I mean, five minutes, it be nice and sunny, and then the next minute, uh, you know, you got a torrential downpour. This, they say this place is pretty decent. I've never ate there, and, and Lex says there's a uh, Chinese buffet right the second place down there. But we're going to walk down this way, and I'm going to show you a little coffee shop that uh, has some really, really good coffee, some nice sandwiches and, and desserts and things. It's right here in this little uh, little shopping center here. They have great coffee. And they fixed, over the years, they fixed this place up. It, uh, it's a lot different from what it was before. Some of you guys that have been here maybe have stopped here and you know they didn't have have the garden set up the way it was the way it is now Whew. nice breeze so far we'll get around the corner here and i'll uh i'll start the story get away from this traffic some really nice artwork on this wall Anyway, the story I'm going to tell you about today is it's about an Australian police officer, sergeant, and uh, he's in his mid to late 50s. And uh, he, uh, he tries to collect uh, disability from, from his department and uh, I think for PSTD or something like that, and they refuse him for whatever reasons. It, it doesn't really say what kind of reason reasoning it, it gives. And uh, from that point, he, uh, he just abandons his job. He takes off and he goes to the Philippines. And he meets this woman and I'm going to stop the story here because I'm, I'm going to interject something here that I don't know is true, but I assume it is. Based on his actions, uh, I would venture to say that prior to him applying for PSTD, he may have met this, this woman on the internet and developed a relationship with her in the Philippines and then makes the decision that, you know, he wants to try to retire and, and live in the Philippines. I don't know that that's true. That's just an assumption on my part. So. You know, you, you can pretty much think what you what you will, but my detective skills tells me that's what what happened. Now this is a really cool building. I love the 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 uh, structure of it, the design, the paint. It's just really cool. 
That is really neat. But anyway, on with the story. He comes to the Philippines and he uh, doesn't say how long he stays, but it definitely says that, you know, he, he developed a relationship with her. And then he, uh, he goes back to Australia. And I assume he probably goes back more so to try to get some kind of disability on his pension because when he goes back this time, they pretty much, dis it says, the article says they dismiss him and they, they give him a, a lump sum settlement, which is not uncommon. That happens sometimes uh, where they'll do that. So he gets his lump, lump sum settlement and he comes back to the Philippines <coughs> and he lives here and, and uh, him and this woman. Now he's, when, it, I, there's about, I'm going to say about a 23, 24 age difference in, in between the two of them. Hello. Uh, he comes back to the Philippines and, and uh, he's living with her and she gets pregnant and has a baby. And uh, from, from all things that I could see, and, and the, both of their Facebook pages are still up. And you can see pictures and stuff. And I'm going to leave a link in the description to the article. And you're willing to, you know, do your own own looking and actually form your own conclusion. Because this, this story, although it has a, a point, there's, there, it, at this point in time, there's no conclusion to it. It's, it's kind of up in the air. But uh, anyway, she, you know, they've got a kid and she also has a child of her own, which is uh, probably about three or four years old at the time. And uh, they are, I, I say they're living very close to where her family lives because on one particular day, the, uh, the girl's sister comes in to the house and congratulates him on the fact that he's going to be a new father. Well, kind of like the cat's out of the bag, he didn't know it. He had no idea that she was pregnant and going to have another baby. And there's some indications too that, that she was accusing him of, of having an affair with a woman. And, uh, you know, I don't know if that's true or not. It, it's written in the article in one point, but, uh, hello. Enjoying a cigarette. <laughs> there you go. Hmm? No, I don't smoke. I stopped smoking a long time ago. I'm going to put you on YouTube, okay? okay. <laughs> you have a good day. Enjoy your cigarette. I gave them up a long time ago. But, uh, hello. But anyway, he had no idea she was pregnant. And he freaks out and he just takes off. He just, he just leaves. And uh, comes back a little bit later, and the two of them just get into a heated, heated argument right in front of the family. They're there. And uh, he's wanting to go back to Australia, and he's wanting to take the child with him. And she doesn't, you know, she's, she doesn't want him to take the child. And, um, they said that even the neighbors said they heard him, they heard him arguing. And this is where John and I ate lunch yesterday. It was really, really good. Uh, I think I've ate there about three or four times, and the food's, food, food's really, really good. But anyway, they fight, and he ends up that night sleeping on the couch. And uh, she goes in the bedroom and goes to sleep. Let's see if he's out here. I don't see him. But uh, anyway, the, uh, the oldest child wakes up in the morning, and finds the mother and she's hung herself from one of the cabinets. Hello. She's taken some neckties and 
hung herself from, I would assume, when they say cabinet, I'm saying probably some type of a wardrobe or something like that where she was able to do it. So he calls, he calls the family and says what she's done and has them call the police. And the police come and, you know, they talk to him, talk to, I assume they probably talk to the kids, you know, I, I don't know, the article doesn't say, but, uh, and they take the body. And, uh, you know, pretty much wrote it off as a suicide. Hello. After, uh, after they get the body in and they do an autopsy and the, uh, the person doing the autopsy determines that uh, she actually died before she was hung and died from strangula strangulation. So they go back and, and get him and uh, interview him and he, you know, he denies it. He says, no, you know, he just fell asleep on the couch and, and that's what he woke up to. Well, they end up, they charge him with uh, what they call parasite because they're not, they're not married, but, you know, they're pretty much considered husband and wife. But we are out on Loic Row. Now, yesterday when I was coming by here, there was a couple of kids rode by in a car and yelled to me. I'll, uh, I'll include some of those clips from yesterday because I had some pretty nice interaction with some people. But uh, they charge him, they arrest him, charge him. And uh, as far as I know, right now, as of right now, all I can find is that he's been charged and awaiting some kind of disposition. And it says that he has, he's tried to get uh, another medical examiner to, to uh, examine the body. I don't know if that's happened or not. Uh, he said that he made mention that he had a, a friend back in Australia who was a pathologist and also a judge. And you know, I, I would be all for that, you know, having somebody else take a look at it. Um, you know, people do make mistakes. And I've had cases where I've had two pathologists both tell me different stories and, you know, on, on different situations. So is it a possibility? Yeah, it, it is a possibility. Did it happen? Uh, who knows, you know, I mean, it's, it's just one of those things that, uh, you know, the, the evidence will speak for itself. And uh, a lot of his friends have jumped on his Facebook, per, you know, saying, you know, you know, uh, he's a good guy. He wouldn't do something like that. And uh, I don't put much weight in that. And there's a good reason why. And, and I'll tell you that story in, in a little while. But... Uh, there is also on his Facebook page, underneath all these comments, a tattoo place. Hello. Um, a, fino, a Filipino girl made a comment that uh, she hung herself, but she had a broken arm and bruises all over her legs. Now, in Nothing that I'm reading indicates that she had a broken arm. Well, but, uh, you know, like I said, the, the, the Asian media here, they'll, they'll, they'll report a story and then they'll stop. You won't hear anything else about it. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if we never, never even hear about the outcome of this. And I think we'll go right here. Because that's the way I went yesterday, I think. I don't know. <laughs> but we'll, yeah, I think I did. We'll go down this way trying to walk the same path that I walked yesterday and I won't have to uh, redo the little walking man but uh, you know his friends can say whatever they want and I'm gonna go back to a situation that I had as a young detective back in 1994 I was uh, I was at home it was Super Bowl Sunday and I had been the unlucky detective to draw the straw to be, be the on-call detective for the weekend 
And the uh, phone rings and I pick it up, it's a dispatcher. And they're telling me that uh, this guy by the name of Larry Ogle, his wife walked off Friday night. She's not been seen since. And this is Saturday. Now, understand it's about 15 degrees outside. I mean, it's cold. But the thing about it is, I know Larry. We all knew Larry. Larry was a former police officer and uh, he had gone to state probation. He was a probation officer in the area that we worked. And we had dealings with him every day, you know? I mean, it was just, um, he's a little short guy with a squeaky voice. He had a voice when he spoke, you knew, you knew it was him. Uh, real mild-mannered, uh, polite, just, you know, every hair on his head was, was always straight. And just, uh, you know, he sometimes he'd have lunch with us. And, and as a matter of fact, one time he even came to my house and we sat at my dinner table and drank tea together. So, you know, my first compressor, oh, you know, this is nothing. Larry's, uh, you know, they probably just had a fight and, you know, she's gone off somewhere. I said, I'll, you know, I'll give him a call and see what the story is. Let me see if I can get by this banging. It's a really neat area in here. I don't know that I've walked this road before. I know I walked it yesterday, but I, before that, I'm not sure if I ever walked it or not. And there was a little uh, noodle stand open here yesterday. But uh, anyway, so I call Larry up on the phone. And I say, hey, Larry, you know, what's, what's the deal? What's going on? He says, oh, Marie and I just had a fight. And you know how people get, they, you know, they argue and she's just walked off and, uh, you know, she'll be back. I'm, I'm not all that concerned. He wasn't the one who ordered a missing. Her family did. Her family lived in the next county. And her family called and basically said they thought he had done something to her. So I talked to him and, and uh, I, uh, you know, I just, I felt something was wrong and I, I couldn't really put my finger on it, but to, to make a long story short, I won't go into the details of it. Within, uh, within 60 minutes of hanging up the phone with him, about 15 detectives landed on his front doorstep and uh, he was real cooperative. He, he signed a consent to search and during that search we found roughly $100,000 worth of stolen property, two stolen tractors, one of which I had actually rode on, and uh, we arrested him. And we searched the property, we used canine dogs, we uh, went everywhere, you know, and just had helicopters up looking, you know, trying to find something. Didn't find anything. I ended up convicting him and sending him to prison for four years. Uh, he did every bit of those four years because the probation office, uh, they, there was no probation officer that would take him. Uh, they just, uh, you know, they wouldn't do it. And by the time, after I arrested him, he bonded out. He was able to make a $100,000 bond. And during that time, his 25-year-old son turned up missing. And the day that that happened, I re-arrested him again. And he never got out. But uh, when he got out of prison, five years later, we watched him and we dogged him as hard as we could. And it was about a year later, we finally, uh, we finally arrested him and charged him with two counts of homicide. He had killed his wife, buried her in the barn, and uh, he had shot his son and buried him in the barn as well. And we found both of them. And uh, he's serving two life sentences. When he, uh, when he finishes the first life sentence, he's got to turn himself in for the second one. So he's got to die and then come back because he, he, he will die in prison. He will not get out. And this is a guy that I ate lunch with, every, you know, at least once or twice a week. Uh, it was really a, a bar bizarre situation. Now, the, this guy, this Australian guy, you know, what, what do you all think? You know, leave it in the comments what you think. Uh, personally, I'm going to give my opinion. And uh, that's all it is. It's just an opinion. It's not fact. There's nothing supporting it other than what I'm reading. And uh, 
and what my experience has taught me that uh, I would venture to say there's a good probability that they got in an argument and he just got carried away. And uh, the next thing you know, he's uh, in school there. You know, the next thing you know, he looks down at her and she's not breathing and she's not alive and he's got to think up, you know, some type of a, a way to, to do something. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a sad story no matter which way it goes. I mean, uh, you know, you hope people get married and, or live together and they have a happy life together and, and uh, you know, raise kids. And, but, like they say, shit happens. And, and I think it did here. So, you know, what will happen, I don't know. You know, uh, if he's found guilty, he'll spend probably the rest of his life in a Filipino prison. The two kids won't have a mother and they won't have a father either. And uh, that's the pitiful part. Now, I'm thinking I walked this way yesterday. Yes, I did. But, uh, you know, as a detective, you look at things and sometimes you can get tunnel vision. And when I told the story yesterday, uh, I told it as an absolute fact that he did it, he's guilty and, and all that. And, and when I looked at the video, I said, well, that's not really what I wanted to portray, you know, uh, just not, not the way I wanted to do it. Now this dog barked crazy at me yesterday. Hey, how you doing? I'm okay, how you doing? Good. He's not barking at me today. Not today, but maybe later when you come back. There you go. Yeah, you know me now. She's nice. Yeah. She Sweet dog. <laughs> and I have ate here before, and the food's very, very good. But uh, you have to keep an open mind because in both aspects, you know, uh, when you think there's something just so bizarre that nobody would ever do it, yeah, there's somebody that's going to do it, and there's somebody that's probably already done it. And when you think something so so good that you know everything's the way it should be and it appears to be the way it is, you'll find that uh, it's quite different. Now here's a Thai restaurant that I didn't even notice yesterday. Good. Pork, chicken, shrimp, beef. Oh, it looks real good. You find these places tucked away everywhere when you're kind of walking. Elephant and Entertainment Park. And I walked right by this place yesterday. I didn't even notice it. I did walk in here. Let's see what it says. Today office closed, but you can contact. Huh. They must take you to the elephant park. Interesting. I've never done that. But, uh, and these are these little glass things. Now, they have two purposes. One is to, to uh, keep people from jumping over your wall. And the second is to keep the cats off of them. Cats have a hard time walking on that. Well, we are back out on the road. And uh, I hope you all enjoyed this story. And leave me some comments. Tell me what you think. You know, uh, if there's a follow-up on it on the internet, I will I will definitely do another story on it. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I think uh, I think an, another autopsy is definitely warranted, and if two of them come back, and if she had a broken arm, then it pretty much seals his fate. He's he's going to spend the you know probably the rest of his life in a, in a uh, Filipino prison. Now, if another uh, medical examiner says that, uh, you know, the first medical examiner made a mistake, then they need to, need to have another one look at it and uh, take the best out of three. You know, because you're talking about a man's life here, and although everything, all the, all the, the situation, points to, you know, what we all think, but the evidence has to go there too.
Well, guys, I'm going to close out this video here, make this corner, head back to the car, go back home, and uh, maybe get this video back up tonight. I, I, there's not a lot of work I have to do. I just have to clip a few things and, uh, and change it, change it around a little bit. But I didn't want to... I did make a, want to make a video that was all one-sided and uh, you know we all have opinions we all have thoughts and we all have things that we think and uh, sometimes we're right sometimes we're wrong but anyway y'all have a good day I'm out of here Hello.